Hello, and welcome to the third video by MCA Services, all about mercury porosimetry. In the last video, we showed you how we select a penetrometer and how we load the sample into it. In this video, we'll be showing how the sample is analysed using our Micromeritics Auto Pore 5 instrument. We'll show the various stages involved in the analysis, and we will be showing some of this on the instrument software. But the first step is to load the penetrometer into the auto pore. So this is the Micromeritics Auto Pore 5. We're just showing the top section of it here because these are the parts that we interact with during the analysis. And an analysis is divided into two parts. The first is low pressure, the second is high pressure. Now this configuration has four low pressure ports across the top here and two high pressure ports here and here. Low pressure analysis is undertaken first and the penetrometer will be inserted into one of these ports. It's first evacuated and then it's backfilled with mercury. The low pressure analysis then starts and pressure is increased from below atmospheric pressure to above atmospheric pressure. And that increase is undertaken using a gas cylinder, which can just about be seen on the right hand side of the instrument. The ending pressure of the low pressure analysis is very much dependent on the, the sample, its morphology, whether it's a powder, whether it's granular or whether it's larger solid pieces, and also whether we expect to see any porosity within that region. At the end of low pressure analysis, the penetrometer will be taken out from here and we may want to weigh it at this stage and we do that if we're, we're looking to calculate bulk density, skeletal density and volume porosity. The sample is then loaded into one of the high pressure ports and high pressure analysis then takes over. Pressure is then increased from the, the final pressure of the low pressure analysis up to 60,000 PSIA. And if we want to undertake an extrusion analysis, we will also do that during this stage. And it's also worth noting that there's various units of pressure used here and that one atmosphere is equal to approximately 14.7 PSIA. So we're ready to load a sample now. And this is our penetrometer that we, we loaded up in the last video and it's now ready for low pressure analysis. Now we'll start with this pressure port here. At the moment it has a blanking plug in it, so we take the blanking plug out and we replace it with the penetrometer. There's a spacing collar that goes over it first and that sits in there horizontally and the cap goes back on. We're now ready to undertake the low pressure analysis. Right, so going over to the instrument software, we've already started analysis and the first stage is well underway. We've got two panels open here, but we're going to concentrate on this one over on the left hand side. This shows the instru instrument schematic and it's just showing the low pressure side at the moment. And the important features here are the pressure transducers around here and we're working off the bottom one at the moment, the lower range one and the sample ports, which are these four here. Now our sample's loaded into this port here, port number three, and that's shown by the black dot. The other ports, one, two, and four, haven't got any penetrometers in there. Now at the moment, the sample is evacuating, the entire low pressure system and the penetrometer, including the sample, has been evacuated, and it's been evacuated through this pump down here. At the moment, the system is at 71 microns mercury pressure, and this process is going to continue right up until a set point is reached. The set point is normally 50 microns mercury. Now a full analysis will take around about one and a half hours, anything up to four hours. It really depends on the exact analysis being required and how porous the sample is. The more porous the sample, the longer the analysis time is going to be. So we're going to leave this stage at the moment it's very near, it's getting very close to the 50 microns, but we'll come back once the second stage is underway. So now the low pressure system has been fully evacuated and the penetrometer has been backfilled with mercury. That occurred at a pressure of 0.1 PSIA, 
So we're now back to measuring pressure in PSIA, and that will continue all the way through the analysis now. We can now also work off of the right-hand panel, and this shows the real-time data collection. Now this was blank before because we hadn't actually reached the stage where mercury intrusion data was being uh, accrued. But now we can see a plot of pressure on the x-axis by uh, intrusion volume on the y-axis being generated. The, the y-axis at the moment is showing the absolute intrusion volume. Uh, but by the time we, we finish the analysis and we generate our reports, that will be displayed as per unit mass of sample. And in this case, the low pressure intrusion is going to continue up to a pressure of 50 PSIA. What we can do, though, is set the end of the low pressure to be anywhere between 20 PSIA and 50 PSIA. Both of those are above atmospheric pressure. Remember that the atmospheric pressure is normally around about 14.7 PSIA. What we need to avoid is ending the low pressure analysis and starting the high pressure analysis where there's a, quite a sharp intrusion of mercury occurring. Now it's quite often the case that solid samples such as catalysts, pharmaceuticals and geological samples have porosity within this low pressure region. Powder samples also very often have low pressure intrusion and that's rather than being into pores within the powders and the powder particles themselves that tends to be into the interparticle spaces between each powder particle so again we need to avoid ending the low pressure analysis where that's occurring so we're going to allow the low pressure analysis to continue up to 50 psia and the next stage will be back onto the auto pore itself to remove the penetrometer from the low pressure side of things and then insert it into the high pressure port. I've now weighed the penetrometer. I've also replaced the blanking rod and reassembled the, uh, the low pressure port we were using. And we'll use the high pressure port on this side. The penetrometer now sits vertically in this port. And in the port we have the hydraulic fluid that's used for increasing pressure. wind this down and we'll see excess high pressure fluid coming up into this sight glass here. Now we'll leave that just for a minute or two to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. Once we've done that we will be ready to just close this valve off here and start the high pressure analysis. So the high pressure analysis has now been started and this is going to continue from the end of the low pressure analysis, so 50 PSIA. It will continue from 50 PSIA right up to 60,000 PSIA and that's going to correspond to a pore size of 0.003 microns in diameter. The pressure will be increased through a series of predetermined increments that have been programmed into the, the controlling software. And these increments, just like the low pressure data, are determined by knowledge of the, the sample or method development on the sample so that we can try and get as, as good a definition as possible to regions where we are seeing intrusion into the sample. The high pressure system is going to generate each preset pressure and at each preset pressure a time will be allowed for the system to equilibrate. So once the intrusion of mercury into pores, if there is any, uh, has it calibrated, then a data point will be taken and that will appear on the display, which is now over on the left-hand side. It's the same display, it's showing pressure on the x-axis and intrusion volume on the y-axis. And at the moment, that's fairly flat, and it's flat to the x-axis, so there's no intrusion into pores occurring. As pressure increases to a point at which intrusion into pores does start to occur, then that intrusion curve is going to turn more vertical relative to the intrusion axis on, on the y-axis. We already know with this sample that that will occur and then the profile will return to being flat again relative to the pressure axis because there's no small pores in this sample. So high pressure analysis can take some time 
and we're expecting somewhere around about 60 to 80 minutes for this particular sample. So rather than record this in real time, we're going to switch to a time lapse version. So our analysis has now finished, we've just recorded the intrusion data here, but essentially the, uh, the extrusion process is exactly the same as the high pressure intrusion analysis, only in reverse. So the last thing to do is generate a set of reports for this sample, and we've got a, a standard set of reporting data from each of our analytical options here, and some of these graphs and some and the summary data should be familiar to some of you. So we'll start with the summary data and we can see that the intrusion volume or effectively the pore volume of this sample is shown here at 0.46 mils per gram. The various measures of pore size are shown here. So the pore diameter, the median pore diameter from the intrusion volume data is 1.26 microns. We've also calculated the bulk density or envelope density and it's 1.42 grams per milliliter or grams per cc and we've got the porosity of the sample as well at 65% porosity. We can see the raw data in tabular form. Now that goes on probably for this sample about 12 to 15 pages. The plot that we saw being generated on screen live as it were is the cumulative intrusion against pressure curve. So pressure on the x-axis down here, but now the intrusion volume on the y-axis is now showing as per unit mass of sample. Through application of Washburn's equation, we can transform that to a plot of pore size against intrusion volume. So pore volume again on the y-axis here, but now the x-axis is showing the pore size diameter in microns. And the final plot is the log differential plot of that curve. Pore size now is on a, a logarithmic scale and this is really useful for visualizing the pore size distribution within the sample. We can see that the big peak here shows the distribution of pores and they're starting at around about five microns down here and running up to or down to 0.3 microns diameter and this peak is centered at 1.3 microns. Well that's the end of the analysis of the sample. We really hope that this has proved informative for you and just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching.